Let's give ourselves a break. We've had um, instability, which was imposed on us because of the division of Africa. Um, you can't lump a people together and expect them to just move together easily. So I applaud Ghana for being different ethnicities and yet being together as one nation. Still pushing cause we go make up Still pushing cause we will get there Okay, so guys, I have here with me an important person. He's sharing something which is so much important and I just pleaded with him that I need not him to go away with this. He need to share it with my people. So guys, without wasting my time, let's continue what we're saying and just stay tuned and enjoy the conversation. So please, can you just introduce yourself to my people? Um, hi, everybody. I'm, um, I'm excited. Uh, came out on a normal yeah. uh, Sunday with the family to uh, view this amazing collection huh? of art in the newly opened Nobuki Center which I think everybody must visit. Um, and, you know, I'm going to drive uh, quite a number of people here myself. Yeah. Uh, just as I came here yesterday for the opening, but I brought my family, you know, my wife and my two kids to come and um, look at this uh, uh, exhibition. Okay. But um, my name is Augustus Richardson. I am uh, an architect. Um, I, I tell people that I was born to be an architect and nothing wow. else. Um, and um, I am the Honorary Secretary of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Oh, I see. I told you he's a, such an important person. <laughs> we are lucky to have him on our channel. Yes, yes. I'm the Honorary Secretary of the Ghana Institute of Architects and also um, managing partner of a, a, a multidisciplinary firm, Mobius Architecture, oh, wow. which is That's in great. Ghana. Uh, we've done quite a number of projects on the landscape. But we love architecture. I, I think that, um, like I was saying to you earlier in the first interview looking at my impressions of the space and also of the exhibition. Um, I think architecture is not greatly understood by a lot of people in the world um, and Ghana is no exception to that. But architecture holds the power to transform generations and people. Um, and so um, this country has seen very amazing architecture, but when you were asking me yeah. about what I think about the work, I said something that when you look at the pictures here taken by Bano, it lets you know the kind of people that we are, and that was a discussion that we were having, yes. in which you know I sort of want to dwell on that. A lot of the time people say that the resources of Ghana is the gold and the, uh, the oil that we found. I've never seen it that way. I, I think the biggest resource of Ghana is the Ghanaian himself, is the, the, the people. Because when you look at Africa, just cast your mind, I mean, when you look at Africa and the kind of people who are doing amazing things in Africa in history, um, the, the, the African of the century is in Chroma. It's not shocking. Um, Kofi Annan is Ghanaian. Kofi Annan is Ghanaian. Azuma Nelson is Ghanaian. Um, you can keep going with the numbers of Ghanaians who've achieved so much. I think it's important for us to ask ourselves, why is this so? Uh -huh. um, and I mean, I can go over the numbers, there's so many people. I mean, one of the most amazing architects today in the world, David Ajay, has Ghanaian roots. We need to ask ourselves the question that, what is, what is it being a Ghanaian? And I think that we need to put a lot of energy in the people. We need to educate the people. We need to create quality education for the people so that we can bring out the talents. I mean, when you look at Bano, forget Bano, go into course, art. Yeah. Today, some of the best artists in the world, Ibrahim Mahama, mm -hmm. if you look at Ella Natri, yeah. um, these are the biggest artists in the world today. Why are we focusing on oil and gold then? Why, why are we doing that? Why are we not focusing on the people? Why are we not investing in education and exposing people? So this museum isn't just a building. It, is, it captures a lot more about ourselves as a people, our society, um, and this exhibition begins that start. In fact, for me, as the Secretary of uh, Architects, um, my, my tenure is up until March, but hopefully I will uh, run again, and hopefully my membership will... Thank you, guys. thank you. But we want to drive a lot of events to buildings of, of architectural repute. Throughout the time, I've been, every event that we've done, we've taken it to buildings of architectural repute, and there are a number of them in Ghana. Um, uh, the, the British Council building done by Ken Scott, amazing building. Ken himself did his own house, which is called the Scott Residence. These are all heritages of the country that we don't even understand. Um, 
when you go to Ted Kwame Nkrumah University of yes. Science and Technology, which was my alma mater, has some of the most amazing buildings in modern architecture, which we don't even know, and nobody's exposed them. So there's a number of exhibitions that we want to do to bring us back to what the past was in helping us to project into the future. We are great people. There's no mistake about this. I have no doubt about it. I don't see Ghana with the squalor. I see Ghana with the opportunity to define what the future will be. Wow. Um, and I think we have the power to do that. And this building typifies that. So, yeah. Uh, wow. So my, my question is, what, what do you think, how can we make it so far, looking at architecture in Ghana, then, and then us to now? Well, I think that we have lost the plot. Okay. Um, but it's okay. Remember, we came into an independence which was forced by Nkrumah. Okay. And for Nkrumah to make the statement, we took what you call the modernist language of architecture at the time, which was the most contemporary language at the time to try and define who we were as a people. Because Nkrumah had this vision of who we were. So Akusumbo, if you look at the number of the buildings that are done, Pediasi, these are yes. classic buildings. There's no mistake about it. But over time, we haven't given attention to architecture. Um, the regimes of architecture in this country are wrong. Um, the, the kind of personnel we have, of course, the country must grow and there are needs and all of that, but we haven't put a lot of energy into investing in our institution of architects and investing in explaining what architecture is. It's nobody's fault. It's, it's organic. It, it has to happen like this. But I believe that there's a new uh, resurgence of, of the need for architecture. And any great people throughout history, from, from the Egyptians to the Greek to the Romans, it is only structure that will tell of who they are. And so it is really important to invest in architecture, not building. And again, remember, all building is building, but not all building is architecture. A lot of people have in mind when you talk about architecture, they think it's building. building. It's not building. It's not construction. It's, it's, architecture deals with emotions. It deals with the emotive. It deals with history. Uh, it deals with culture. We need to sort of, and it's not saying it, it's yeah. feeling it. I mean, you are standing in this space and you can feel it. Of course. There's something, there's a space spirit. Yeah. And we can feel it here, you know. So it's important that we do that because it has the ability to transform generations. It is Winston Churchill who says that uh, shape your environment and the environment will shape you. Of course. Look at our environment. If we don't actively shape it, mm -hmm. using, and I tell you, it's not about drawing forms and it's about philosophy, it's about thinking, it's about understanding, it's about interpreting who we are as a people. So there's, art is very important, music is very important. When you look at the scene, um, our musicians today, Sarkodie, take all of them, they are doing amazing on the global scene. But when we look at us locally, we haven't given a lot of attention. So somebody wouldn't understand why we should design an amazing school. You know, because it will influence the people who are even going through the school. Achimota school was well designed. It's their heritage today. Today, if you look at what they are doing on Achimota School today, they are destroying it yeah. <laughs> with the new buildings because we all think it's just building. So we need to be sensitive about, therefore, art and architecture and, and generally, just the arts generally uh, because that is the only way that a, a civilization will, will prove what wow. its metal is. Wow. Yeah. My last and final question. No, no, it won't be your last and final. We'll have this discussion <laughs> continuously. <laughs> okay. trust me. All right. Now so, I've made a friend. So, okay. yeah. mm. so what do you think will be the way forward? for the next generation to be more concerned and have passion to go into the architectural field? Well, I think it's not just the architectural field, and I think that the next generation already is concerned about what's happening. You see, let's give ourselves a break. We've had um, instability, which was imposed on us because of the division of Africa. Um, you can't lump a people together and expect them to just move together easily. So I applaud Ghana for being different ethnicities and yet being together as one nation. Having all the coup d'etats that were naturally to happen, there wasn't going to be development. There, there wasn't going to be. I, I, I compare it to the bombing of Chernobyl uh, in history. And when the atomic bomb hits, for years there's nothing. In fact, human occupation is even wrong because of the effects of the atomic bomb. But in time, when you go back to look at Chernobyl, plants and nature has taken over. When there are wars and instability, creativity vanishes. Now, in the Fourth Republic, after 30-something years of stability, you see what is happening now. So we must, when people talk about war and we will fight, I find it sad. It, we cannot fight. We must use the democratic processes and dialogue and parliament to discuss the issues. I believe in the systems. I believe in the rule of law in this country. I've experienced it in my recent uh, uh, position as honorary secretary. So I think that if we all, you know, push it, and as my late father would say, the pen is mightier than the sword, 
If we keep writing and exposing like you are doing vlogging, we will raise a generation of people that in Chroma believe in that are uh, able to um, manage their own affairs, uh, as, as he put it. So yeah, we have the ability to do it. Thank you so much. It's such an informative discussion we had here. Uh, and I've gotten a new friend as well. Absolutely. We'll keep <laughs> in touch. So. We'll, we'll keep in touch, touch. for sure. Uh, for sure. Guys, so wonderful to please, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for staying with you. And I'm sure you've really learned so much. Please, just like this video, comment and share with someone. Let's spread the news out there. See you next time on my episode. Bye. Uh, thank you so much. Charlie, thank it's you too. so informative.